Eva Greenushla, Ta Falcher Riff Kach in you, the No Heart Special to Show in Ulskull in Lee, Kundilimni in Aaron. Hello to everybody, and you are most welcome to our graduation ceremony here today at the University of Limerick on the banks of the River Shannon, Ireland. It is a wonderful day that we have planned for you, and I hope that you, your friends, and your family get to enjoy this special time as the university awards you for your endeavour and achievement during the course of your studies with us here at the University of Limerick. Take this time to relax and enjoy and breathe in the significance of your achievement and note that this achievement is something that will always stay with you and that you will be able to reflect back on in years to come as you recount the journey of your time here at the University of Limerick the times where you put in great effort to achieve your goals, to work with your lecturers and tutors and professional staff in order to realise the dreams that you came to us with on the first day of your journey. I hope that this special occasion for you, your family and your friends is all that it can be at this time and that you will go on to celebrate even when this ceremony is over. Cogordicus live Galair. Welcome to this UL online conferring ceremony. My role today is to say a few words on the significance of the academic robes worn by our academic staff and the graduates. The origins of academic attire date back to the 12th century when universities were beginning to emerge. At that time, the dress of the scholar, both student and teacher, was that of the monk. The academic gown can be traced back to the Council of Oxford in 1222, where the local bishop decreed that all clergy should wear a closed flowing gown. Both Oxford and Cambridge adopted this practice and continued it even when the clerical attire changed. In 1895, formal standards were agreed for American universities, which continue to this day. There, the colour used is indicative of the subject to which the degree pertains. This same uniformity does not apply here in Ireland and you will find it very difficult to identify a pattern or consistency. The hood was originally intended to serve as a cover for the tonsured head of the cleric. Caps came to be used later. You will notice that some academics wear caps while others do not, depending on the custom at the university at which the degree was conferred. In medieval times, the mace was a weapon of war and was a heavy staff or club made from metal and was originally used for breaking armour. In 13th century France, the mace was carried up by the monarch's bodyguard and began to acquire a ceremonial function as a symbol of secular power. At a live ceremony, parchments would be presented across the university mace to the graduating students by the president. Today, the UL mace will be placed on the table in front of our president to maintain its significance for use in acknowledging your academic achievement. I hope that you enjoy the ceremony and can celebrate your success with your families at home. Thank you. Graduands, welcome to your graduation ceremony. This online ceremony will last for approximately 45 minutes. I now call on the President, Professor Kirsten Mai, to officially start proceedings. Members of Governing Authority, members of the Academic Council, distinguished guests, parents, partners and families, graduates of the Class 2021, colleagues. 
A meeting of the university is hereby convened for the purpose of conferring academic awards. Exercising the power granted to the University of Limerick by Orachtes Ehren, I hereby confer degrees of the university on the graduates from the School of Medicine. I now call upon President of the University of Limerick to deliver her conferring address. Graduates, welcome. Dear Eve, I must begin by offering you the warmest of congratulations on completing this hugely important part of your learning journey and your life. Take a moment and reflect. Be proud for you have graduated at an immensely challenging time for the global community through COVID-19. Unprecedented, deadly and disruptive. These could be used to describe the last 15 months of life for you as students, for your parents, family and friends, for all of us. And while we are beginning to emerge on the other side, significant challenges posed by the impact of the coronavirus pandemic will be with us for years to come, but so will be opportunities to reflect, take stock and to do things differently. Speaking of emerging, today you are emerging from your journey through higher education. For some of you, your steps on this pathway of formal education will end here for now and you will enter or resume professional life with a deeper understanding of the world and yourself and with a valuable skill set. For others, you will stay on the path of formal learning, inquiry and knowledge exchange by taking your studies onwards. Nonetheless, and whatever path you have chosen, your success is hard earned, highly valued and above all a credit to you and your support network. No one gets to graduate without a great deal of hard work, commitment and persistence and some degree of self-sacrifice along the way. None of you came to education without that basic desire to help others to fulfill their potential. By fulfilling your own potential here at UL, you are now equal to that task. Furthermore, and as graduates of 2021, you have put yourself at the heart of this most valuable human endeavor to empower others to empower themselves. Thank you tutors who work with such passion and commitment to educate the leaders and decision makers of tomorrow. Thank you parents, guardians and your family who stand behind you offering the support that cannot be measured. Thank your friends who stand by your side and for just being there. And thank yourself for having the perseverance to see it through to the end. You have shown resilience throughout your journey and at the most challenging time. Education has shown to be resilient also. However, we must learn from this pandemic and how change was foisted upon us. We must transform education and we must do it so that it meets the challenges of tomorrow. Any transformation or reimagining of university education has to go hand in glove with the reform of its funding model and an enhancement of investment into research infrastructure and talent, research capacity and capabilities. Since its foundation, UL has evolved from a regional institution for technical education into a national comprehensive university with growing European and global reach through excellence in research and education. We have you your alumni, who are the most sought after graduates that industry so desires and society needs. UL has consistently led on student employability in Ireland. Developing talent pipelines has supported the attraction of significant foreign direct investment into the region, the flourishing of multinational corporations and indigenous businesses. It is talent that underpins the vibrant regional innovation ecosystem. You are entering into that world as our ambassadors and we are so proud of you. Today, as we know, should be filled with the grandeur of the ceremony held on our stunning campus and there is no replacement for that. Your loss is our loss also, but we will come back again when it is safe to do so. Your academic achievements are worthy of the highest praise. Indeed, to achieve an award and meet the exacting standards of this institution is a success in itself but to do so with the backdrop of a global pandemic warrants the deepest admiration and richest congratulations. Normally, these special days would be celebrated with family and friends and supporters. 
but we have been forced to ma make sacrifices to protect ourselves, each other and the communities we serve. Never before have we seen the importance of community spirit, values and ironically togetherness. We have stood stronger together by staying apart and despite that anomaly, homes and classrooms, be this virtual or in person, are reinforced as a seedbed of community values. I hope you will look back on your time at UL in Limerick and as part of a community of scholars. As I mentioned already, society is reopening and we are on the road to recovery. Our society rejuvenation will be supported by you, bringing your skills, creativity and commitment into professional life and our communities. The importance of our sector has been highlighted by the COVID-19 crisis. Science and the relevance of educational engagement and global research activities is how we overcome adversities like this. To that end, we continue to stand firm against any dilution of educational standards to ensure that you can use your degree confidently and proudly in the knowledge that it is an unquestionable statement of ability, academic integrity and attainment. More than ever, we need that sense of community to be sustained and enhanced to help us address the many imbalances and societal challenges before us. The shared experience of being a graduate can give rise to future experiences where you get to enhance your life and the lives of others, where you make a difference. You can build on your own educational achievement to date and use this as a platform for lifelong learning and for shaping the world of tomorrow. University of Limerick has always placed educational access at the heart of our mission. It is our role to ensure that anyone who has a passion to learn should be enabled to do so. We cannot squander talent because we did not remove basic obstacles to learning. We will continue to make education accessible to all. We will continue in our pursuits of equality, diversion and inclusion. It is imperative that we continue to invest in enabling technologies to ensure, for example, that we can benefit from the academic contributions of a wide range of learners of different abilities. This ensures that our store of knowledge, which every student, every teacher and every researcher contributes to, gives us an ever deeper and wider understanding of the world we live in and everyone in it. Cherish the knowledge and truths you have gained. Keep adding to it and remember that you are now alumni of this institution. You are inextricably linked to University of Limerick and we urge you to stay in touch as you go out in the world for the next exciting chapter of your lives. To finish, I will offer you these. As we look forward to the rest of the year and 2022 with growing optimism, remember this. Patience, determination and hard work are key ingredients for success and you are now equipped with the mindset and the tools to achieve success, however we may define success, and overcome challenges. And while we face challenges, we need to be cognizant of our own self-worth, our ability to learn and our potential to grow. Savor the short-term success, but be mindful of your long-term fulfillment and all the while think carefully about your priorities. I will close by wishing you all the very best for your new adventures in the knowledge that when life does become uncertain, you will always find comfort and sustenance from the achievement of your graduation. Stand tall, be proud, relish the achievement and shine a light. Congratulations and well done. Thank you very much. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome the Minister for Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, Mr. Simon Harris TD, to say some words of acknowledgement and congratulations to you. Hello there and thank you very much for allowing me to be here virtually as part of this really important day for you and your families. As a nation together, we have made an extraordinary effort over the course of the last year and more in response to the spread of COVID-19. Every aspect of our lives has come under pressure as we've worked together in response to what has been an unprecedented threat. All of you, every one of you, have shown tremendous dedication, courage and resilience in completing your studies under these difficult circumstances. You have pursued your ambition under the most trying conditions and limitations that this pandemic has caused. And today is my opportunity to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you as Minister for Further and Higher Education. I want to congratulate you as a former Minister for Health and I want to congratulate you as a citizen of our country. 
To pursue a career in medicine is an altruistic, selfless endeavor, even in normal times. To pursue it in the midst of this pandemic, to step forward as frontline staff at a time when your country needed you more than ever, deserves nothing but praise. All of you, no doubt, have grown and have matured. You've increased your knowledge, your skills. You've developed a deeper level of personal awareness and confidence. This journey that you today have completed has so many implications for your future self, the decisions you're going to make and the opportunities that life will bring as a result of your achievements. And with that, there will be a ripple effect where your achievements will also potentially impact on those closest to you, your family, your partners, your friends, those of you who have taken this journey are going to inspire others to follow in your footsteps, to believe that they too can fulfill their potential and pursue a career in helping others and serving the public good. The University of Limerick's medical school is Ireland's youngest medical school, and it was the first in Ireland to allow graduate entry. Yet despite its comparative newness, it's already established itself with a reputation for excellence and an inclusive, progressive ethos, having received a number of awards since its opening, such as the Athena Swan Bronze Award. This is a reputation that looks set to continue to grow, especially given the quality of student doctors who will be conferred today. This in many ways is a microcosm of the University of Limerick itself, which enjoys a reputation for academic excellence in such a wide range of areas. I would also at this juncture like to acknowledge the really hard work done by university staff, endeavouring to keep the show on the road, to continue to deliver tuition, to keep university services active and to continue to support the student body despite the pandemic. And I want to thank each and every one of them for their efforts. Finally, I'd like to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for persevering with your studies despite the trials that you have faced as a result of the pandemic. The fortitude with which you have borne the stresses of your studies and the pandemic is nothing less than inspirational and I'm sure that your future careers will be equally inspirational. To graduate in medicine at any time is a massive achievement. To have done it against this backdrop is simply outstanding. Thank you for your service. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you for your contribution to our national effort. And I wish you all the very best as you take this next step on your exciting journey. And as we take that step with you to make sure we don't just go back to normal, but that we build a better country and we build a better health service as we emerge from this pandemic. Congratulations, Cohortigas. Thank you very much. I am now pleased to call on the Executive Dean, Faculty of Education and Health Sciences, Professor Rachel Massetfi, to make her address of welcome and to present the candidates for the conferring of undergraduate and taught postgraduate awards. Good afternoon, everyone. As Dean of the Faculty of Education and Health Sciences, I am so honoured to welcome you, our medical graduates, your families and your friends to this very special graduation ceremony. Today is a celebration. It is a celebration of your achievements in receiving the medical degree that you have worked so hard for over the last four years. You have certainly been on a journey. You have undertaken your training here on the UL campus and in our wonderful School of Medicine building with all of its excellent facilities, as well as in our partner hospital sites and in GP surgeries across the Midwest region and all across Ireland. You could not have anticipated when you started this programme that you would have been completing your training on the front line during a global pandemic and in so doing answering Ireland's call. Many of you volunteered during this crisis, as well as completing your studies. During all of this, you have responded with dedication, compassion and professionalism. We could not be prouder of you as you begin the next stage of your career as newly qualified doctors. In your educational journey here at UL, you have been supported by the School of Medicine every step of the way. Staff in the school have innovated the academic programme in order to ensure that in spite of the extreme challenges, you have been able to graduate on time and meet the exacting criteria for registration with the Medical Council of Ireland. On your behalf, I want to pay tribute to and thank the staff of the School of Medicine, in particular, the head of school, Professor Deirdre McGrath and Dr. Helena McKeague, course director. They have been there for you day and night and have gone above and beyond. Thank you. 
Other important thank yous go to the staff of the University of Limerick Hospital Group, the Midwest Community Health Organisation, in addition to those of our partner hospital sites and the numerous GPs and their staff across the region and across Ireland who have hosted you in your placements in spite of them being under such huge pressure clinically during the pandemic, they have welcomed you as students, worked with you and supported you to get you to this point today. You have also worked with their patients and whilst you have contributed kind and compassionate care to their patient journey, these patients have also contributed to your educational journey. Without all of this people, your education would not have been possible and we thank them today as well. I suspect that your journey through the medical degree programme has had its tough moments and these will have been different for each and every one of you. However, during the tough moments, you will have found support, sometimes from your family and friends, and you will have also found deep inside yourselves the strength and tenacity to keep going whilst you studied and worked hard in order to get to this point today. This has meant a good deal of sacrifice on your part. But graduates, can I say that parents, partners, children, friends have also sacrificed. They didn't get to see you as much as they might have liked to during your programme, and especially during the last part when you were studying for exams and possibly worrying about the future your mind may have been on other things. So, when we speak about education and knowledge, we often speak about standing on the shoulders of giants. And some of those giants are our families, our partners, our children and our friends who have supported us in our journey. And today, we thank them as well. Graduates, at this point in the conferring ceremony, it is traditional for your Dean to give advice to the class a few wise words to take with you on your journey. And I have to say, the thought of giving advice to smart and talented people such as yourselves makes me feel very nervous. So I've engaged in a thorough search for quotes that extremely clever and important and famous people have said on such days, but nothing seemed to fit this moment. And then I realized why. I have confidence in you. I have confidence in the quality of your training. I have confidence in your abilities to be excellent and caring doctors. And looking for the clever quote said at another graduation ceremony would not be consistent with that confidence. So I decided to have confidence also and use my own learnings to deliver this advice. I am a Dean, yes. I'm also a mother of three, a wife of one, an aunt to wonderful nieces and nephews, and life has had its challenging moments, and I have experienced tragedies and losses. One of the phrases I always come back to when times are tough is a phrase that has helped get me through. This too shall pass. And tough times are just that. They are moments and we learn from them. Life isn't just about challenges, it's about successes. It's about joy. It's about wonderful moments such as you are experiencing today. And again, I say to you, this moment too shall pass. So enjoy it. Savour this moment. Take photographs. Remember the pride that we have in you. Remember the confidence that we have in you as you go out to begin your career and your working lives. We at the University of Limerick are proud of your achievements and to have had the opportunity to support you in your journey. Thank you. I am now delighted to ask our president to confer the awards. President, the Academic Council of the University has been satisfied that the following candidates are worthy to be conferred. Therefore, I present the candidates and request you to confer the awards upon them. The head of the School of Medicine, Professor Deirdre McGrath, will now call the candidates in alphabetical order from the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery category. Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery degree. 
Nada Al Faraj, Mara Al Said Hassan, Nicholas Armstrong, Jason Aubrey, Farid Azadian, Iona Bacchus, Tariq Badudin, Justina Baltrinate, Ross Book, Megan Kenning, Ryan Cantor, Niall Shu, Julie Clifford, Grace Collins, Alwyn Conlon, Catherine Copeland, Maria Cowley, Roisin Cullen, Grace Curley, Michael Curran, Amir Dar, Dar Arsha Delfani, Guillaume Delport, Anna Damien, Angela Dennehy, Connell Desmond, Keelan Deaver, James Deville, Emily Dolan, Aoife Donnelly, Fiona Doyle, Therese Dunleavy, Julie Evers, Ryan Fagan, Shane Fitzgerald, Christopher Flood, Rebecca Flynn, Andrea Forkin, Courtney Frangopoulos, Keith Geraghty, Sean Goldbach, Justin Graffy, Philip Green, Claire Grehan, Yusuf Gurguis, Hannah Gummison, Anna Gunnasilan, Jakob Hamuth, Aaron Harrington, Niall Higney, Aideen Hillary, Sarah Hirji, Kain Feng Tung, Hila Jazeri, Larn Jones Whiting, Emma Keegan, Shannon Kelly, Jane Kendling, Jamie Langill, Thomas La Riviere, Lauren Lavoie, Sarah Lavou, Sive Luby, Sinead Lochran, Shauna Lowry, Molly Lynch, Niall Lynch, Sarah McEwen, Jessica Magerman, Dorian Ma, Kamya Mahajan, Jason Mahoney, Martina Menyon, Agnieszka Mastalaska, Leith Firas Matty, Enid McAdam, Katie McDermott, Gemma McDonnell, Richard McNamara, Jenna McEwen Doris, Natalie Milloy, Dirian Minna, Surika Moore, Dina Muradi, Caroline Moran, Podrick Morrissey, Sabina Mullins, Ashling Merchant, Patience Wasige Karunji, Kiron Nari Nenry, Katrina Nikahasig, Julie Nicholson, Barbara Nolan, Barry Noonan, Neave O'Brien, Killian O'Connor, James O'Connor, Liam O'Donoghue, Faye O'Donovan, Aidan O'Dowd, Stephen O'Driscoll, Ava O'Driscoll, Louise O'Flynn, Sharice O'Mara, Eamon O'Reilly, Jaspreet Padham, Mark Pardy, Ravina Patel, Priyanka Patel, Andrew Patton, Amit Puni, Paul Quigley, Owen Quinn, 
Mustafa Razwali, Petrus Retief, Abigail Roberts, Jonathan Rodriguez, Bradley Ross, Maeve Ruan, Calvin Rizowski, Phelim Ryan, Sophie Savarwal, Bisola Salaja, Omar Salman, Charlene Salmon, Matthew Sangoy, Chloe Shipperst, Baljo Sakan, David Slater, Brian Slattery, Sabina Strachan, Isabel Sweeney, Jack Sweeney, Haley Tenner, Zoe Taylor, Catherine Thompson, Johnny Thornton, Tatiana Wagner, Aidan Walsh, Connor Walsh, Anne Marie Walsh, Alex Ward, Catherine Wilkie, Lauren Wren, Jonathan G. Fayu. While everyone who successfully completes our programmes have in our eyes excelled, we do still wish to recognise those individuals who have performed at the highest level. I now have the pleasure in announcing the awards for the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery degree programme. There are 10 awards in total. I will call the first seven awards out in alphabetical order of the name of the award. Each award represents the top performance in the relevant disciplines. First prize in the discipline of general practice primary care, Johnny Thornton. First prize in the discipline of medicine, Aidan Walsh. First prize in the discipline of obstetrics and gynaecology, Mara Al Saed Hassan. First prize in the discipline of paediatrics, Anne Marie Walsh. First prize in professional competencies, Aidan Walsh. First prize in the discipline of psychiatry, Niall Heagney. First prize in the discipline of surgery, Aidan Walsh. First prize for overall performance in the BMBS Graduate Entry Degree Programme, Aidan Walsh. The Niall O'Higgins Medal. A former student of Crescent College here in Limerick and graduate of University College Dublin, Professor Niall O'Higgins is one of Ireland's most distinguished surgeons and it is in his honour that this medal is named. In addition to his national and international roles, Professor O'Higgins was chair of the University of Limerick Hospital Group until 2017. The UL Hospital Group is partnered academically with the University of Limerick and works closely with the School of Medicine and the Faculty of Education and Health Sciences to provide undergraduate and postgraduate education and training across several campuses and in several disciplines. The medal symbolises the increasing bonds between our UL Hospital Group and the University of Limerick. The medal is awarded for best overall performance in the graduate entry medical school's final surgery and final medicine clinical exams. The winner of this award is Aidan Walsh. The Royal College of Physicians of Ireland's Reuben Harvey Prize. This prize is awarded by the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland to the top performers in the disciplines of medicine, surgery and obstetrics and gynaecology in each of the medical schools of Ireland. The Reuben Harvey Prize is normally announced and presented by the college in the autumn following graduation. However, in light of the extenuating circumstances we find ourselves in this year, the college has given approval for this award to be announced in advance of that date. The winner of this award is Mara Al-Sayed Hassan. 
I now invite Sinead Lochran to stand and lead the graduates in taking their oath. I swear to fulfil, to the best of my ability and judgement, this oath. I will use the knowledge and skills that I have gained for the good of others and not just for myself. I will respect the knowledge gained by those physicians in whose footsteps I walk and will gladly share such knowledge with those who are to follow in my own footsteps. I will be conscious of my own limitations and be ready to request help from colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will apply for the benefit of my patients, all measures required, whilst endeavouring at all times to do no harm. I will remember that I do not merely treat a disease or its symptoms, but a human being whose illness often affects an entire family. I will remember that empathy and understanding may outweigh any other treatment that I can offer. I will not discriminate against a patient on any basis as I owe a duty of care to all. I will respect the confidentiality of my patients. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with obligations to my fellow human beings, those who are sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will take care of myself so that I may take care of others. I will practice my profession with honesty, conscience and dignity. I take this oath solemnly and willingly in the presence of my future colleagues. And together we undertake to maintain its values. I now call upon Sinead Lochran to say a few words to her peers in the School of Medicine graduating class of 2021. Welcome students, tutors, professors, GEM staff, parents, friends and relatives to the BMBS graduation for the class of 2021. A huge congratulations on becoming the next wave of junior doctors all over the world. Each of you should be incredibly proud of yourselves for overcoming four challenging years and especially so over the last two years. The COVID-19 pandemic has not only threatened the lives of millions around the world, but for us medical students, it threatened our education and thus our careers. The adversity we faced as a group has been like no other. Reduced clinical exposure, a shift to online tutorials and alterations in various examinations. As a group, we stuck together and pulled each other through. And for that, I am not only incredibly grateful, but incredibly proud of each and every one of you. I want to extend a special word of thanks to the staff at GEMS who navigated through such difficult times, to the amazing tutors, the various hospitals who hosted us as students and the staff of those hospitals, to the UL campus staff, to our parents, family and friends who supported us through the ups and downs of this course. And on a personal note, thank you to the UL sports and scholarship staff for helping me manage my academic and athletic career. For those of you who don't know me, I'm not the best at speaking. So I've written a poem about our time at GEMS, and I hope you enjoy it. It only seems like yesterday was orientation week, donning our first scrubs as we enter Limerick's mystique. Icon was Limerick's answers to copper, while Nancy's was more tame. And so the GEMS couples grew from a spark into a flame. PBL became the norm to allow self-directed learning. And with every week a new case came, our curiosity was burning. Didum, Murphy, Green and James helped teach us the foundation and sitting our first clinical exam was a comedy compilation. Always prepared for our LOs, we'd know them to a T, but when it came to presenting it, oh please do not pick me. Some would draw while others wrote to offer explanation, but here's to Armando on osmosis for the extra clarification. The clinical labs and mannequins were provided for our knowledge. The anatomage for anatomy, we are truly a unique college. We entered wards, the patients real, and tutors by our side wearing our first stethoscope around our neck with pride. Bedsides and tutorials help fine tune all our skills and shout out to Victoria for the labor and PPH drills. The tutors were incredible, always offering a hand, going over subjects that were difficult to understand. Prof Heher, Coffee, Cotter, Cronin, just to mention a few, and various other GEM staff helping us pull through. 
COVID hit, the world was flipped, but still we persevered. Some helped out with previous jobs, while others volunteered. We learned so much in a short four years, by now we should be laughing. But when in doubt, just remember to order gastrographin. What we've endured the last few weeks feels like the Truman Show. But I hope you've come to realise you're stronger than you know. And now we leave, degree in hand, to answer our vocation. The time has come to free those alarms from our daily declaration. Again, a sincere thank you to everyone who supported us through this degree. And finally, to each of my fellow students, I wish you a long, happy, successful career in medicine. Thank you. Cohortigus Agus Goma, Gorov Mila Mahogat. Thank you.